some people today believe that good people go to heaven and bad, bad people go to hell. And this is just not true. You know, you, you see on uh, TV or, or any other media for that matter, uh, people talking about uh, uh, people that's left this world and they talk about them going to heaven because there's a good person. Or they might talk about a person in such a way as to say, well, he gave to his neighbor, he was caring to other people, and so on and so forth. And that's good. Uh, as far as this life is concerned, I like people that care for me, uh, even, even if they're lost. I, I like for them to care for me, and, and I like to, to care for those people as well. But this idea that a person can be good enough to go to heaven is absolutely not true. Now, if only good people go to heaven, then none of us could be there. Notice what it says in Romans, the third chapter. 21st verse says this, or 12th verse, excuse me. 12th verse says this, There is none that doeth good, no, not one. There is none. That's all in constant. No one doeth good, no, not one. Then uh, if only bad people went to hell, we would all be there. Notice what it says in Romans, the third chapter and the 23rd verse. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all in constant, everyone. Uh, we have failed short of God's mark. And if we uh, uh, try to approach uh, eternity any other way than trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior, then we're on our way to hell. None of us are good enough to enter into heaven. We have to have salvation. Now, no goodness of the flesh, no goodness of the flesh will ever admit us to heaven. I know there's a, a lot of stories you hear. Oh, we'll get to the gate. And Peter's going to be there at the gate, and he's going to last. That's not the way it is at all. And, of course, that's the, the uh, picture that the devil will paint. But the only key and the only way to heaven is through Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary for you and I and accepting him as personal Savior. Now, the truth is that sin of not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is the reason a person goes to hell. He don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate sin, not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the sin that damns the soul uh, for eternity is unbelief. Now, <clears throat> heaven is God's gift to believers. Those that put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for sin, uh, that uh, uh, he is our way to heaven, the only way to heaven. So those few uh, thoughts, uh, maybe pointing back to Brother Tom's uh, lesson last week, but this week, uh, we were going to talk about multitudes. I think uh, they are born again uh, because the devil has lied to them and caused them to believe a lie. It might be that they attend church every, every service. It might be that they do good things. Uh, it might be that they belong to some organization. It might be that it's tradition. My family has always been Christian. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But the fact is, we've already said, the only way to heaven, the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. But trusting in him, that's the only way. He is the key. He is the way. So we're going to talk some about that. Uh, uh, some people may think that they're, more, they're more, morally good enough to go to heaven. Not true. Uh, that they've been religious all their life. Uh, they're going to go to heaven. Not true. Now, so we talked some about maybe people that are looking for false hope in, in, in their life, uh, and that when they die, they're going to go to heaven. Let's talk a little bit about the other side. That's those that have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior, and uh, they're truly born again, but the devil comes uh, into their life at times and causes them doubt. You know, you may be here this morning and you can say that you've never doubted. I can't say that. 
I'd be lying if I did say that. So I can't say that. There's been times that the devil's come in, and I've been uh, walking too far from God, and he's lied to me, and I believe there's lies. You know? I don't know if that's happened to you or not. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's caused by the limited knowledge of God's word. That's what causes us to doubt. The devil comes in, uh, he may give us a lie. And he's going he's to hinder in any way he possibly can. And so uh, it's because we're not founded in the word of God. Because when we read the word of God and we believe the word of God, we can see clearly that we should not doubt. That we're truly born again children of God. We're going to talk about some of those things this morning. We're going to talk about some of the tests that we can take in our own being to determine and be on solid ground about our salvation. Now, in other words, we need to take inventory of our life. Take inventory. And there's four reasons given there in that pamphlet, and they're pretty good when you get into them and get into studying in depth what they're saying. First of all, it says we need to check our fruit. What's happening in our life? What's the fruit? You know, I, I've got a, a little orchard, and I mentioned this from time to time. Uh, don't do very well most years because uh, the cold weather kills a lot of them. I think maybe this year I'm going to have some apples. <laughs> you know, it looks like the blooms have made it. Now, my pear trees, I, I don't know if they're going to make it or not because there was real bad a cold spell there a couple of weeks ago that may have got those blooms. But anyway, I expect apples on that tree. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an apple tree. I've got apples off of it before. So when we look at our life as a Christian, what is the fruit? And we know by studying God's word of what the fruits of the spirit are. We know that those fruits should exist in each one of his lives if we've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Now, when we first get saved, the flesh may have a lot of control over it. Brother uh, Jimmy's been preaching on this for last month or two, uh, at least. Uh, the, our our uh, flesh might have control, but now, now know this. As we mature as a Christian, our flesh should have less and less control. Now, let me share this with you. The devil gets to us through the flesh, not through the spirit, but through the flesh. He don't come into the soul, the spirit, our spirit. He comes in through the flesh. Now, we're living in a day today where we're, we're drawn off on every, every, I guess, every side, you know. Uh, whether it be politics, where it be TV, where it be move, whatever it might, uh, the, the uh, situation that we're involved in, it will lead us away. So it, it's very important that we continually put down the fleshly side, the lust of the flesh, the wants of the flesh, and take on the things of God. And as we mature, that, that happens to us. Notice what it says in 1 Corinthians the third chapter and the 16th verse. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. Do you know when you're born again, the spirit of God comes in and dwells in your being. So when that verse, when we read that, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, the dwelling place of God's Holy Spirit. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. And when we start thinking about that, and we start thinking about how that we live our life in the fleshly terms, we should be very, very conscious of putting aside, aside anything that the flesh would uh, uh, encourage us to do and look toward the spiritual side, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So that should, if you look at my life now, and you look at it 20 years ago, or, you know, for me, it's been some 60 years ago, you know, uh, that's older than most people here. Uh, I think there's one might be older than that. But, uh, uh, you know, if I look at my life today and I look at it 60 years ago, uh, it should be, there should be, you know, that many years and that much learning of God's word. I should be, uh, we should, I should put the flesh completely out. But we know that uh, that's not been the 
the situation with me. I've struggled with it over the years, and probably you have too. But the thing of it is, we should continually put down the fleshly lust, the fleshly desires, and look toward the leadership of not be led by the, those desires. That's very easy to do. We're living in a, in a time where we've got all kinds of ways that we can, we can uh, fulfill the desires of the flesh. You know, and, uh, but that should not be the case with us as Christians. We should be not fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and we should be fulfilling the spiritual side. We'll talk about a little bit more about that in, that in just a minute. So if you look at my life today, it should be completely different than what it was 60 years ago. And as I said, I've had problems uh, with that struggle. And the Bible calls it a warfare. It's a continual warfare. You know, uh, you know I, I've, I've heard people, I guess, give me uh, the indication that they believe once you're born again, you know, the spirit is dead. And, and you, uh, you're, you're not controlled by the spirit at all. But I find that to be a lie. You know, you might be born again. You might be forgiven of your sins. You may be, uh, you may be a Christian. But let me tell you, the flesh is still there. And it's our job to put down the fleshly desire and take up the spiritual desire. Now, notice what it says in the eighth chapter of Romans, the 14th verse. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, when I think about that, I made this statement so many times. If we're truly living in the center of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about, you know, you've got, to put that, you've got to put the fleshly side down. If we're truly being led by the Spirit, there'll be no sin in our life. But let me say this. That's an impossibility for me. I don't know about you. Uh, you know, I, I've heard people give this testimony that they don't sin. Uh, I have a problem with that because uh, that be be the case, and if that's what it took for me to go to heaven, I'd be in big trouble. There's no telling how many times I've sinned this morning, and uh, we, you know, it can be a thought, it can be a desire, it can be anything that might that, that might hinder, and that is sin, and we want to be careful of that. Now, if you would turn over, and I don't have this down, so I'll have to turn to Romans the eighth chapter. Nine. The 16th verse. I used to have uh, the uh, scriptures laid out. But the 8th chapter of Romans, look at the 16th verse. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So there should be fruit, sir. Uh, I, I'm amazed with this. Let me tell you, I'm amazed with this, this, this fact in my life. There's a man that I've watched quite a bit. He's dead and gone now. He's with the Lord. And he wrote gobs and gobs of gospel music. He, he sung with a group. He sung with his family. And the first time I ever seen it, and, it, and this is via, via uh, YouTube, the first time I seen that man, there was something there. Man, I could speak it. Now, I can't wait to, to, to see him in heaven. Because uh, there's just something. There was a there was a kinship between me and that guy. The first time I ever seen him, and so on and so forth. Never, I don't know him. I never met him or anything. There's a kinship there. I found people that I've met that there there is a you know uh, you know brother Eric's one of them. Brother Eric, there you know the first time I met him, he got a good warm spirit about him. I, I just kind of drawn to him, you know, you know, and I've told him that. That's a blessing for him. God's blessed him with that spirit. So those kinds of things we can feel within ourselves because we know that Brother Eric is a Christian. We know that he's a man of God. And we can feel that as we meet those people. Now, you, you've found people that maybe or that you meet that, that you don't have that feeling with. So we need to question him when we have that. But anyway, uh, God's spirit, God's spirit agrees with our spirit, and that is what he's talking about here in this 16th chapter of the 8th verse. 
the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So I know from time to time we might not be as close to God as we should be. That's our fault. We've not uh, studied God's word. We've not allowed God spoke to God and allowed God to speak to us through his word. And sometimes we get a little bit cold. But we should stay prayed up and read up and studied up. You know, I like I, I like to listen to a lot of different preachers. I really enjoy listening to Brother Eric down at the Old Tag Baptist Church. And if you've, uh, if you've not listened to any of his sermons, there's quite a few of them on there. He don't tape all of the sermons. Uh, they're kind of spotty, but there's plenty there to listen to. You get on the Internet and listen to his sermon. He always had a lot to say. Kind of amazing to me. I mean, it's kind of amazing that his message is how much they have to say. And, and, it, and he's a very, he's very knowledgeable with history. Very knowledgeable with history. Uh, uh, a worldly event. So he can apply those. It's very interesting. So I like to listen to him. I learn from him. I learn from Brother Jimmy. You know, one of the first messages he preached here, one of the first, he talked about the word they. And how important that was. When they talked about thee, the only one, thee. And it made me realize when I read that in the Bible, well, I just, I just looked down and looked at the uh, ninth chapter of Rome, and I, I say the truth, the truth in Christ. That's the only truth. The truth in Christ. That's the only truth. That is an article that says this is the only one. Uh, when you read the Bible and it says the Son of God, there's just one Son of God. They don't say the sons of God, it says the Son of God. So it's very important. That was a very good lesson for me. Not that I didn't really realize that, but that drove it home. When I see that word the, I mean, that's it. That's it. Now, so we need, that's the first thing. Uh, we need to check the fruit of our life. Is you know, do you enjoy serving the Lord? If you don't, problem, problem. Do you desire to be with God's people? If you don't, problem. Do you desire to read God's word? Do you desire to talk to God? If you don't, problem. Second thing. We need to check the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? That's, you know, when I read what God says about His Word, He says His Word will not pass away. Every jot, every tittle will be fulfilled. Now, this is something we can depend on, God's Word, because it's never ending. It'll always be true. And so when I read God's Word, and, and this past week I was watching some guy, and uh, uh, it was real good. Matter of fact, I, I'll, I'll probably go back and watch some more. Talking about science and the Bible. I don't know if you've ever seen any of that or not, but just, I don't even know the guy's name. I just kind of run across his and I started listening to him. Man, what a dynamic teacher and preacher. And I've been listening a little bit of that. But that's one, one thing that he said. Right up front, I don't go by what any scientist says. Right up front. You know, scientists may say, I've got proof. I don't go with that. I've seen too much, uh, uh, too much lie today. I don't really go with that. What does the Word of God say? That's what I go by. What does the Word of God say? Another, uh, another message that really hit home to me, Brother God preached it, uh, some of the few, first few sermons he preached. And he talked about, well, the Bible don't necessarily call out certain things, but you, the Bible gives you principles. The Bible gives you indication, and uh, it will apply to your life. The right. principles of the Bible. In other words, it might not say, be at church at 10 o'clock right. for Sunday school. But the Bible says that we are together together as we have opportunity. That's a principle. 
we are to love each other. That's a principle. You know, we just got through going through a Bible study on charity. Uh, and that, that's a wide encompassing word. And, uh, it challenges us that we should be more in love with God and God's people and God's work. And so, uh, when I, I want to, I think about that, that lesson or that sermon. It always comes to mind. What's the principle here? Uh, what does the Bible, what does the Bible say in principle? Now, there's things that the Bible says definitely, but I don't read any word where it says for me to be to church at 10 o'clock in the morning. You see what I'm saying? But there's a principle there. We should meet as often as we can. It's God's principle. Now, one of the reasons why is because we're living in the last day. There's no doubt about that. And the closer it comes, the more that we need each other, more that we need God's word. All right. First John, the fifth chapter, looking at 13th verse. These things have I written unto you that I that believe on the name of the Son of God. Look at that word, the, the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Why do we have eternal life? Because we have believed on the Son of God. Now, it's good that we live as good as we possibly can. But that ain't going to take us to heaven. That's not going to take us to heaven. What takes us to heaven? Believing on the Son of God. Have you done that? If you have done that, you have eternal life. Notice what he said. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You may believe on the Son of God. And in, in the middle of that verse, it says that ye may know that ye have eternal life. So we can know that we have eternal life. How can we know? Have I believed on the Son of God for the remission of my sins? Have I believed on the Son of God? If I'm not, I'm not born again. Second Timothy, uh, the second chapter. You know, and here is an instruction that Paul was given to Timothy. Man, there's a lot of instruction in these two books. A lot of instruction. What did you tell Timothy to do? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A work that leadeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I also this past week watched another person talk about how the, the word of God is twisted in today's society. Taken completely out of context. He shared many, many verses where the, well, I'll just say this. Some of the TV, the prominent TV preachers have taken those verses and took them, taken them completely out of context. We must be careful of that. Paul says that we should study the word of God to show ourselves approved before God. We should study. Learn as much about God's word as you possibly can. Learn as much about God's word as you possibly can. Now, uh, God has teachers and preachers that brings things to our mind. It kind of tickles our uh, understanding. But the final, the final authority is the word of God. Right? The final authority. You know, uh, I don't want you to take anything I say. Uh, I want you to see what God's word says. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what Paul is saying to Timothy. Study. 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 What does study mean? We really, and, and those of you that have prepared lessons in, some, uh, in the past, know that you get more out of it than anybody. <laughs> I mean, you start studying, you start, man, man. I've never seen that before. Boy, that's powerful, you know. And it just really gives you an uplift in your spirit. Hopefully all of them do. But Paul says, Timothy, study to show yourself approved, approved unto God. Not unto man, but unto God. A work that needeth not to be ashamed. Now, I say that. I have had cases where I'm not given uh, some work uh, I guess uh, my full effort 
it's kind of been a shame the job that I've done. Does that happen to you? Yeah. Well, now what Paul said, hey, study. I mean, learn God's word. I mean, apply God's word because you won't be ashamed. You won't be ashamed. Second Timothy, third chapter in the 16th and 17th verse says this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, yeah. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Now, of course, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, but this applies to every one of them, man or woman. If you're a child of God, this applies. And uh, when we read the Word of God, well, let me say this. I, I, I was going to say it a few minutes ago. And watching some of the things I was watching last week on on uh, the biblical or the scientific. Now, there's a lot of science in the Word of God. Don't misunderstand me. And, you know, I might have some questions. I'll let my flesh and nature say, start asking questions. Uh, I might have some questions. But I don't like to do that. I say to myself, this is the word of God. And God says it's true and it'll stand forever. And I've seen enough in my life to know that's true. <laughs> and so I don't even, if you come to me and say, well, I found a rock and it's 14 billion years old. Nah. God said it was created 6,000 years ago. Now, you, you ask me, how can that happen? How did they go and find things? And, well, it's been a lot of their findings has been disproved. Uh, not true. And so on and so forth. I was watching, uh, I was watching one situation and this had nothing to do with the other situation I was watching, but uh, it just happened. It, I just happened to run across it. The star had exploded and they were studying how long it took that star to disintegrate. And they said, well, you know, that happened. Uh, we're just now seeing it, but it happened 14 billion light years ago. Now, let me tell you, a light year is a long way off. And it's 14 billion light years ago. I don't need to question that. God says, in the beginning, that's enough for me. It's what God said. And it's true. And he says, there's not one, not one comma, not one period, not one small word, not one big word that won't be fulfilled. Now, We've been let down a lot in this world. But God's word will not let you down. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. This is how you should live your life. For reproof of your life. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. You want to know how to live a good life? Look at God's word. Now, so, we can go down and study a lot of different things, but one of the things that we need to really say it in concrete, get a hold of God's word, believe God's word, and let it just penetrate. When I think about it sometimes, I love good steak. And uh, I know uh, there's certain places that you can get a good steak. And they tell me the secret of that is uh, they put it in some of their, you know, I guess, special recipe, and then let it marinate and let that the recipe just really soak in. Man, when they cook that steak, it just melts in your mouth. I think, how in the world did they get those steaks so tender? This is one of the certain, one of the certain steaks that I've, I've had the blessing of being able to eat on. But uh, it just, it just really gets in every nick and every corner. I mean, it ain't like you just take one bite and that's good. I mean, that's good. But you get all, all the way down to the last bite, and you always say with another bite. <laughs> I mean, it was marinating. Do you know that's the way we should allow God's word in our life? Fill every corner. When we think about how we should live our life, what does God's word say about it? Now, when we get in that, I think, when we get in that arena, there'll be no doubt in our life. The reason why I have doubt in my life is let too much of the world. You know, you, you don't, sometimes, you, you know, you just don't feel like, well, you can't go with feelings, by the way, but you do like to feel. I mean, I like to feel good about uh, things, 
You can't let feelings happen. You have to go on what God's word says. But allow God's word to fill every corner of our life. Now, the Bible tells us in a lot of different places. They're not, we're not to trust in ourselves. We're not to trust in man. We're not to trust in anything other than God. So when I, when I read that, as a matter of fact, let's go back. You would go back to Joshua. We just read that real quickly. Read uh, verses 20 or chapter 24 and let's look at together verses 15. And what does it say? Verses 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve God, serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord and or serve God. It's Lord, big letter, the big. A letter L. Now the Holy Spirit of God brings each of us to a place. And that, this is all human uh, human beings. You have to be a human being in order to be a candidate for heaven, by the way. You have to be born of the water, and then you have to be born of the Spirit. Now, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit of God brings each one of us to a place in our life where that we realize that there is a God. And that eternity is real. Now we can get all caught up in this world now. Here again. I'm getting older now. Some of you may not look at it hard this way. I thank God for parents as we get older. I realize that, you know, I have a lot of friends a lot younger than me. It's not going on to that eternity. And uh, uh, when I realize that, uh, and sometimes, you know, you think, think of Josiah there. He, he's young. I mean, he got a lot of years ahead of him. At least he thinks he has. And we think he has. You know, he's got another, he got another 60, 70, 80 years ahead of him. But know this, know this, that God brings each one of us to realize there is a God. He's gave, he's given us all kinds of things to look at, you know. I, uh, you know, you get up in the morning. You know, have you ever thought about this? You know, it's raining now. How in the world does that sky hold all that water up? You know, down in Florida now, they've, they've got like 12 inches of rain or flooding everywhere. That's coming out of the sky. I can see through it. And sometimes I can even see the sun in some areas of the sky and all that water. Those clouds holding all that water. Well, uh, man didn't design that. God did. You know, God keeps it in, keeps it in check, so on and so forth. So there's all kinds of, because man don't believe in God, it's because his eyes are closed, he's blind. The devil has got him blinded also. But the Holy Spirit of God brings each of us to the realization there is a God and that eternity is real. You know, I'm, you know, I've been here quite a while now. Now, I used to think about, oh, Civil War a long time ago. Well, you take two of my lifetimes, and all of a sudden, Civil War is right there. You see what I'm saying? So, time don't mean anything to God, by the way. Time don't mean anything. He's eternal. Don't mean anything. But it does to us while we here, live here on this earth. But we need to realize what we determine here on this earth, what we find here upon this earth, is going to be an eternal decision. So, we have to make a choice as a human being. I've said this, and I think it's absolutely true. The most important decision a person will ever make is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior or denying. As we already said, that unbelief will send the person to hell. Now, I know it's difficult to break the old superstition. And, and by the way, I'll say this, I have to continually do this myself. Just because you've always thought this is the way it is, you could be wrong. 
Well, anytime you hear a preacher or a teacher or anyone else, you be the word of God. It might be a little bit different from what you've always heard and what you've always thought, what your mom and dad thought, what the, where you went to church and what thoughts on. And always remember, it could be wrong. Well, be open to the word of God. Be open to the word of God. I know there's a, there's a lot of songs. It's, it's not really built for songs. We, that, Kind of, I guess we've sung in the past. We've got we've got some problems, you know. That's uh, uh, some of the verses in the Bible out of context, maybe on some of the songs, songs of the Lord. But remember, just because you've always thought that, be open-minded enough to check it out, because you could be wrong. Years ago, this is a good example. Years ago, I've given you examples, and I'm in fact, but you, man came to the door uh, trying to sell some books, Bible, or something. I wonder. I said, "Is man here today?" Said, "Said him some Bible." You know what he said? He said that uh, Noah took more than two animals on the <coughs> That ain't right. I remember going when I was in Sunday school, man, seeing the gang plank two by two that went up there. Well, again, don't want to be closed minded. So I go look. Uh oh, been wrong. You see? And that's a, that's kind of a simple example because we all probably know better than that. But anyway, that is, that's how we can be wrong. Thinking, since everything is right. So old superstition, religious tradition, doubt, uh, anything that uh, would hinder a person and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior, because that's the main thing here on this earth. We live here a few, you know, we're, I'm already way past my allotment and time. But we're only here a few years. That life goes pretty quickly, by the way. The older you get, the faster it goes. I mean, I, I used to hear older people say that. I don't know what you call your mind getting filled up with information, what it is. But man, time flies now. I mean, I'll have things. I'm going to, I'm planning on doing maybe in the spring. I'm going to plant a garden. I'm going to get that garden plowed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. First thing I know, spring's gone. I ain't done any. You know, it just gets to go by that quick now. Matter of fact, I used to think, how in the world did I do all this stuff when I was working? <laughs> but anyway, time flat. But thing that a person needs to, and here's something. I've seen a lot of old people. The oldest me and maybe old. You need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know it. I know it. I think their, their intentions are good. I know. But it's like that they think they're going to live forever. You know? Knowing they've seen the our, you know, our bodies wear out. <laughs> I put a, most of you have probably seen it, but I put, I, there's an old picture that I had, and I cut myself out of it, put it on Facebook. I had had a couple of my friends say, as a matter of fact, the guy I worked with, did you ain't change the bit? I never did tell him that. <laughs> that was when I was 35 years old. Man. But anyway, another person said, boy, so I'm going to take that. I don't even like to look at it. But anyway, I uh, just looked at Facebook. I'm on your Facebook friend, seen that. But anyway, life don't lie. It don't, it don't lie. And we know our bodies wear out. And we can't get up and down like we used to. <laughs> and, uh, and it's not getting better either. It's getting worse. Uh, Brother God used to say that's old age benefit. Um, so, forth. so how in the world can a man not know that it's time to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and putting it off? How uncertain life is here today and gone tomorrow. So it's important to trust in the Lord while we have the opportunity. That's catch that. Why the Bible says why we have the opportunity. We might, this may be the last opportunity a person will ever have. 
for the greatest decision, the greatest choice you and I will ever make is whether or not to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and gain through him eternal life. It's truly a choice of eternal life or eternal hell, eternal separation from God. God's word says that sin produces death and all flesh will die because of carnal, carnal sin. Now, for those who do not repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior, eternal death of the soul is their final place. Totally separated from God. Eternally. Now, if you're living in this world today, God is called to accept that call because it may be the last chance that you will have. I don't know. You may have thousands of chances. But the Bible says, why well, you have the opportunity to do it. Do it. Imagine. Today, we have things that we look forward to. You know, when I was working, I looked forward to vacation. I looked forward to the weekend. And man, if you had a long weekend, man, got a long weekend coming up. But just think, a person that turns away the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior has nothing to look forward to. It is eternal, eternally separated from God. And go back and say, I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd done that. So, accept the Lord while you have the opportunity. I'm going to have to close.